Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Leo, and I'm here today to answer some questions from the community. And today's question is, what should we do about the masks that we're being told to wear now, especially for patients with facial eczema, where it can be irritating, uncomfortable, and warm? Are there any tips or tricks? Well, I'll tell you that the guidance has been changing fairly rapidly, but I really do suspect that it was going to be one of the new norms going forward, at least for a while, that we're gonna be encouraged to wear masks in public. And as much as I don't like that, uh, I think it really is for the safety of others so we can just minimize the spread and get back to normal more quickly. Now, one nice thing is that it turns out we don't need to wear something like an N95 or even a surgical mask out there to do the bulk of the work. Now, clearly, if you are protecting yourself from a patient who has COVID or other illnesses, you don't wanna just wear a bandana because it doesn't filter out very well. But that's really not the goal of the masks, right? The goal of the masks is to keep some of the particulate matter coming out of our mouth little bits of spittle, the vapor, all that, and really minimize it. It is far from perfect, but we're not going for perfect. We just need to cut the spread down significantly, and that probably can make the difference uh, between passing it to a certain number of people versus not. So very, very uh, reasonable, I think, even though I know some people are, are quite concerned about it. Um, but the good thing is, it seems that like we have a huge range of options to pick for these masks. We don't have to pick something uncomfortable or scratchy. And I will tell you that I like to sew a little bit, so we broke out the sewing machine and we actually used some really nice t-shirts, soft, older t-shirts that are kind of buttery and soft. I cut out the mask and I made these really nice face masks. And they're super comfortable, they're super lightweight, they're double layered, so we really think they do a reasonably good job of keeping at least my stuff in and our, our family stuff in. Um, of course, again, they wouldn't be suitable for if you were working in the hospital or with someone who had it but really, really nice. And I know there are a number of companies working on things like this, super soft, silky ones. Uh, I can tell you that at least one eczema-focused garment company was in touch with me and said, what do you think? And I actually, with my little sewing machine, made a prototype and I showed her and I said, what do you think of this? And she's excited. So I actually think if we stay tuned, we keep an eye on the NEA, we will hopefully get some news about some garments that are actually even designed for sensitive skin. They're super soft. They're basically based on eczema clothing, these super gentle, often they're bamboo fabric or tensile fabric. Some of them even have antimicrobial properties built in, which can be kind of nice. I don't know if it'll do anything against the virus, but it could help against some of the bacteria and make it, make it certainly a little bit more hygienic in general. One of the other things that's important is we want to wash those masks after wearing them and we really want to be careful when we wash them. We don't want to use a harsh uh, harsh detergent or fabric softener or anything like that. We want to treat it just as we would our, our gentle clothing because especially this, it's right up against our skin all day. So stay tuned on that. For the meantime, I think we just want to try to, try to find the gentlest, softest fabrics. And again, the CDC has even said in a pinch, you can even use something like a t-shirt or a bandana. And there are a number of guides online for making a very simple face covering, but hopefully in the next few weeks, we're gonna have some new options. I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much for your attention and we look forward to seeing you at the next one.